Okay, so good afternoon. And the expert panel members, student presenters, and honored attendees, uh, welcome to venue D for of the second afternoon session. So my name is Jun Yang, and I will be serving as a faculty moderator during the session. So before we begin, I would like to announce that today's session is being live broadcast, which explains that the presence of the camera crew. So could anyone please be sure that mobile phones and the devices are turned off or switched to silent mode? And there will be three students presenters uh, today. Each one will deliver a 15 minutes, a summary of their research funding, followed by a five minute session of question from the expert panel. So at the end of the session, we will call up uh, all the students and the industry panel members to take a group photo together. So now it's my pleasure to introduce our four expert panel members. And uh, Mr. Allen, uh, Ko Liang Yu, Executive Assistant Manager, Grand Apple uh, Hotels. So, Ms. Candy Sun, Director of the Revenue Optimization and Distribution Sense China. Mr. Patrick Scalp, Vice President of Hotel Operation, MGM Macau. And Mr. Kelvin Lay, Assistant Vice President of Strategic Analysis, MGM Macau. Okay. The first presenter this afternoon is a, a Carol Wang. So please, it's your turn. Thank you. Testing, testing, okay. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carol Wang, and today I'm, I'm so honored that I can have this chance to give you guys the presentation of my thesis. So the title of my thesis is the Ex an exploratory study on the status of smart technologies used in Macau five-star hotels. First of all, I would like to say thank you to my supervisor, June, for her help with my thesis. Okay, so in today's presentation, there will be six parts including the introduction, literature review, methodology, results, discussion, and the last part will be about the conclusion. So let's go into the first introduction part. When you see the title, you can find the keyword is Macau. So Macau is regarded as the Las Vegas of the East, which means that the, the Macau is broadly known for its tourism industry, especially the gaming tourism. So when we talk about the tourism industry, we will take the hotel industry into consideration. So how about the hotel industry in Macau? The hotel industry is an important part of Macau's economy. And the five-star hotels have been greatly developed in Macau. You can find there are more and more well-known five-star hotel brands in Macau. About the current status, nowadays it is the special pandemic of COVID-19. So what's the keyword of COVID-19? It is social distancing. So how can the Macau five-star hotels balance the social distancing as well as the giving the service, the caring service to the guest? The answer will be about the, uh, the smart technology. So let's go into the research questions of my thesis. Firstly, what is the status of the smart technologies now used in Macau five-star hotels? What will be the future chain of the smart, smart technologies used in Macau five-star hotels? The last one, let's talk about the smart hotel. What is the five-star hotel's attitude towards a smart hotel in Macau? So the literature review part, I have selected several smart technologies used. First one is the self-service technology. The picture is a self-checking kiosk. So the application of the SSTS can help the hotel with the improvement of efficiency and effectiveness. And the second one is the in-room controls. So from the picture, you can see that a panel or an iPad can help the guests to control the room based on the guest preference. And this can help increase the guest satisfaction at the same time. About the robotics, the, some, the application and the test of the robotics are now progressing vigorously in the hospitality industry. You can find some robotics work as the front desk agent or help the guests deliver the luggage to their hotel rooms. And then th this talk about the smart hotels. So this picture is 
the smart hotel in Hangzhou called FlyZoo opened by Alibaba in 2018. So the smart hotel, which uses the new information and communication technologies, is a new model for operating the business in the hospitality industry. So let's talk about the methodology part next. This is a qualitative study where the, con where the content analysis has been conducted. And then the, I conduct with the in-depth interviews. So because of the COVID-19, all the interviews are conducted online via Zoom and Teams. This is a profile of my interviewees. You can find all the interviewees are come now currently work in the five-star hotels in Macau. And at least they have five years of working experience. So about the results, the first part is the understanding of the smart technology. 80% of my interviewees mentioned that the application of the smart technology can help improve the guest experience. All of the, one of the interviewees mentioned that in Melco, the Morpheus Hotel, the guests may need to make the phone calls for setting up a wake up call. However, in Morpheus now, they put this in a system where the guests can just press the button to get their request meted. And all of the guests mentioned that the application of smart technology can help reduce the cost of the hotel. So I have the interviewee from the MGM group mentioned that the users of the smart technology should not only include the guests, but also the employees. And then the smart technology should include both front end systems and back end systems. What the most people only see are automatic checking, face recognition, door opening, and robots. However, the smart technology should include many back end systems, which are invisible to the guests for different departments back of the office in the five star hotels in Macau. So about the smart technology applications inside the rooms, 80% of my 80% of my interviewees mentioned about the in-room controls, which has been discussed in the literature review. However, there may be some elderly guests. They may not be familiar with the in-room controls panel. So the guests of the, so the employees of the five-star hotel, they will send their staff to help the guest with the instruction of this kind of service. And three out of nearly all the five-star hotels in Macau provide the guests when they request for the daily newspaper. However, three out of five interviewees mentioned that in their hotel, they can provide the guests with the electronic newspaper option as well. In all, this function is good for the both environment protection and operation cost at the same time, because there is no need for them to send the personnel to help deliver the newspaper and preparing the newspaper can be could be a big budget because there are so many uh, quantities of the newspapers all around the world. And then 40 and mini bar can be found in all hotel rooms in the five star hotels. Uh, the, Interviewees from the Wing Group mentioned that in their hotel they have adopted a mini bar weight sensor. This can help the this can can help change the menu checking of the mini bar consumption. However, there may be some situation that the guests just take out the goods for a look, and after 60 seconds, this is automatically added in their account. So for this situation, the hotel will send the personnel to help double check. However, in total, the cost of the personnel has been reduced because of the application of the mini barway sensor. So let's go into see the smart technology applications outside the hotel rooms. The check-in is a necessary step for the guests when they start to stay in their hotels. So for the hotels, for many hotels in uh, Macau, some of them have already used the iPad to show the confirmation paper to the guest to sign instead of printing it out. This can help reduce the cost as well as help protect the guest pr privacy because of the paper used. And then the payment method for the deposit is also developed because of the use of smart technology application here in Macau. Uh, second, uh, lastly, the smart technology application can help solve the language problems during the check-in. Some the guests can choose their preferred language for them to check in when they see the system. So this can help reduce the possibility of misunderstanding when they do the check-in with the front desk agent. 
uh, about the events, we all know that Macau is now promoting the M as a MICE city. So the event guest is a very big and important market for the five-star hotels in Macau. The interviewee from Grand Hyatt mentioned that in their hotel, they has a smart app for the event guest where the organizer can upload some necessary information for the attendants to see, and this is can make their uh, event more convenient. And second, from the, according to the interviewee from the MGM, they mentioned that in MGM Kautai, there is a stool, uh, the smart technology used in their theater so that their theater can able to hold different types of events such as e-sports event, talk show or banquet or concerts. The next one is a uh, smart technology for the staff. As I mentioned in the understanding of the smart technology, the users should include both staffs and the guests. So some of the five-star hotels in Macau, they have developed the app or like the WeChat account for the uh, public account for the staffs so that they can see what they can have some look at the inf necessary information, like the canteen menu, the schedule of their, uh, their bus, this kind of stuff. And they can also apply for the leave via this app instead of going to the HR office. And the second one is they have some specific device for the housekeeping staff. And for the smart technology trend under COVID-19, I have mentioned that the keyword is about the social distancing. So some of the five-star hotels in Macau has already used the online checking system where the guests can type into some necessary information for them to check in or for them to check in. And when they arrive at the hotel, they can just grab the room key. The second one is that in some restaurants in the five-star hotels, the guests can just scan the code on the table in the restaurant to see the menu and order the food. And the third one is for the employees as well. For the employees, they can just punch the card by the drawer and get their uniform. So let's go to the results of the last part, the future train of the smart hotel in Macau. What is the attitude of the employee of the interviewees according to the smart hotel? So they define the smart hotel as the hotel that is equipped with smart technology that replaces the human employees. Three out of five interviewees also mentioned about a word called no human hotel as the smart hotel. So what they mentioned is that the market of the smart hotel is not the same as the market of five star hotels in Macau. The, they mentioned that the five star hotels may more concern about the guests who want to receive the caring service, not just face the, not just use the smart technology. And they mentioned that the smart hotel mainly in Macau could be a business hotel for the business guests instead of some leisure guests in Macau. So the third one is that the five-star hotels in Macau will keep looking into the smart technology. However, the application of the smart technology should fit the culture of the five-star hotels, which means like the caring service for the guests. So the discussion, the status of the smart technology, the, state, uh, the smart technology can be divided into three categories, such as in-room facilities, if improving efficiency of working and saving costs. And however, as I mentioned in the literature review, the robotics, none of the five-star hotels in Macau have adopted this kind of application. And then the future trend of smart technology, only one type of checking method cannot satisfy all types of guests. So I suggest that some uh, five-star hotels in Macau may take the self-service checking kiosk into consideration for some like the young guests, they, don't, they do not want to line up this kind of stuff. And then, the social media monitoring system can help the hotels with service recovery and increase the guest possibility of booking. So for the smart hotel, the most common understanding of smart hotel from the interviewees is all done by technology and nearly no human contact hotel. So this is not consistent with the literature review. And smart hotel use various technology in order to improve the management efficiency and the functioning efficiency. This is not only replace the personnel cost, so let's go to the conclusion part. The significance of this study is that the, in this study, you can find the difference in the understanding of smart technology between the employees in Macau five-star hotels and existing literature. And for the limitation, as you can see in the methodology, the number of interviewees is limited 
like unfortunately I did not have any interviewee from like the sand or like the galaxy. It is a, a pity for me. And then for the all interviewees are conducted online, which may have led to some misinterpretation of the information. Uh, last is about the uh, suggestion for the future study. So this study is based on the perspective of the employees who work in the five star hotels. And I think that later there can be some research based on the perception of the customers, how they experience with the smart technology when they stay in the five star hotels in Macau. So that's the reference page. And thank you so much for your listening and your precious time. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Kara, uh, for your presentation. So now we are going to say, uh, open the session for questions or comments from our distinguished panel. Uh, okay. Carol, well done. I think this is a very good presentation and it's very clearly uh, showing us uh, how your study on this tech, uh, smart technology. I think your conclusion, you also mentioned that uh, for the future, you also want to see what's the perception of the customer. I think this is a key of the smart technology implication in, in hospitality industry, because you also mentioned that some five star hotel think, okay, smart hotel maybe is not direction of the five star hotel. But I think in my mind, I think what's the uh, people touch or personal touch, I think just accommodate customer by the way they prefer. For example, if I stay at the five star hotel, I just don't want to touch with uh, have the interaction with the front office or with the housekeeping uh, staff. I think the robot is enough for me. So I think maybe some concept wise, uh, from the hotel layer point of view, sometimes we think customer need this, but this probably not necessary the customer really want, especially under the current situation. And also we know the visitors come to Macau is uh, becoming younger and younger. So I think this is uh, the smart hotel. It's really the future of Macau. Yeah, thank thank you. you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. It's a very good presentation. I'm, I'm very fond of technology. I do like it, but I also know where I am. I'm in the traditional hospitality and we have a reputation for that. But I do agree with you with your steps that the perception of the customer is going to be really important. And I've seen in, in various places the impact of some of those robot deliveries, especially for family hotels where kids really love it because it's a great experience. But also sometimes I, I would Caution, as you said, with the with some of the subjective comments, you probably will have to get more quantitative data to really reconfirm some of the things uh, in terms of actually functioning and 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 uh, at the same time, maybe not replacing humans, but probably supporting them and being more efficient. To your point, so I think it was a very well done presentation, and uh, you're on the right track to get some more data to analyze further where we're going to go. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. I think the presentation, as, as all we mentioned, is well done and also very informative. And I think you basically you cover more of the area that technology can be applied in the hotel. So just want to uh, add a little bit thing on it. I think I think Macau is a is a kind of special uh, tourism city. Unlike other places, you probably visit one per year, maybe even once per your lifetime. But Macau, we do see a lot of kind of repeated guests visiting maybe every month or maybe. Of course, they they coming for different purpose instead of just hospitality. But the, the, so I think one of the area that the technology of the smart hotel can do is that they in terms of the customer preference or the data, how they come into the room, how how they adjust the room temperature or other thing. They can be record and then well stored in the into the CRM system. So instead of the next time the the, the guests need to be kind of adjust something for themselves, that actually some of the data be well store and well applicate their facial data to, to make the get experience in, even to the next level of the state. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, um, I do agree with what our panel member was said and the, I do agree with you, your, your last sentence, the perception of the customers as um, what Patrick mentioned is um, the AI, it can assist but it cannot be replaced, especially in the hospitality industry, okay? 
And uh, I would suggest for your next further study, on top of this study, you may you may continue study and do some instead of uh, qual uh, qualitative because you only got five respondents, right? Yes. And I believe they are all from the hotel, working from hotel, right? Yeah. But what your subject is talking about the uh, um, smart technology used in Macau five star hotel. So who used the technology? Yeah, because uh, my topic is my title is the exploratory studies on smart technology use in Macau. So mm -hmm. when I just uh, define this topic, I just want to, um, according to the perspective of the employees, because I want to know like when they, because they all have the very long working experience in the five-star hotels, just like the Melco and like the MGM, I have the very professionals, they work uh, like related departments. So they're really very familiar with the IT department, what uh, kind of application. I want to have some inner, inner perspective from the hotel that this can be a promotion as well just like what i give you the presentation you can find that okay so in wing we have the mini bar with sensor okay so in morpheus we have like the in-room controls so this is uh, one of the reason why i choose this kind of uh, qualitative interviewees as my uh, study mm -hmm. thank you i do agree and uh, but on the other hand because it's used maybe the customer will use it our guests will use it so uh, what I say is in your future study, you maybe uh, conduct a uh, quantitative research yes. with your, let's say your, 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 to enlarge your um, sample size, including the maybe age group, what, what kind of uh, age group and their income and the education as well as their language speaking. I believe once you got all this information and I'll, I'll, I believe you have a different point of view. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, if I thanks. continue to my master degree, I will keep working on this. Thank, thank you so you. much. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Carol. All right. The second presenter this afternoon is Qi Xiaotong. Please. Testing. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Qi Xiaotong, and today is my good honor and pleasure to share with you my thesis work. And my topic is about the hotel customer perceptions of AI-based voice assistant, and it's a comparison of Macau and mainland Chinese residents. So um, the, introduction, the introduction, so why is this topic? So as a new trend, the artificial intelligence as a new trend, uh, it has been uh, applied in various industries and hospitality is inevitable. And so far it has been used in the industry, in the revenue, revenue management, in hotel operations, especially during the pandemic uh, pandemic period, the hotel, the hotel operations, uh, for example, the uh, robotics, it helps, uh, it played an important role to reduce the people contact and one of the latest uh, AI empowered devices is called AI based voice assistant well you can you, you can verbally use it and uh, take orders to it to control the AC control the lights or uh, to play music or send the request to hotel staffs well it helps the customers create a smart and unique experience and improve the working improve the hotel staff's working efficiency However, what do we know about customers' perceptions about these devices? Uh, because previous studies have investigated on the other types of the uh, AI-based devices, but lack of this kind of uh, topic, uh, especially in Macau context, because uh, uh, actually uh, this uh, device has been a uh, has been uh, has been applied in mainland China and in USA. For example, the Ven Resort and Hotel in Las Vegas had already adopted this uh, a voice a voice assistant into their guest rooms. But in Macau, not so many in this case. So, um, in order to have more understandings about the customers' perceptions to this device, uh, we have uh, here we have two research questions. The first one is: What factors affect customers' behavior intention towards AI-based voice assistant? And the second one is: Will customers' perceptions and behavior intention towards this voice assistant significantly differ based on the geographical locations? 
Okay, so that's I will briefly introduce the literature review and previous studies have summarized the AI technology ad 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 adoptions in the hotel, uh, such as the uh, self service technologies, the robotics, and so on. Uh, uh, well, uh, it has some benefits. For example, it gives the, the customers convenience, it gives the employ employees uh, less work burden, but it also has some risk. For example, it, uh, the potential personal information leakage may, may be occurred. And uh, the, ho the hotel technology adoptions could have some positive impacts on the customer's behavior in the hotels. For example, it uh, is found that the AI technology adoptions in the hotels can improve the, uh, the customer's uh, uh, consumption intentions and increase the length of their stay. And I've also considered the factors influencing the customer's behaviors in the hotels. For, them, uh, for example, the customers perceive the value, the perception, their perceptions of the physical environment of the hotel and the inter interactions with the hotel staffs. And next, I will talk a little bit more about the model I used in this paper, which is the unified theory of acceptance and use of the technology. It's a very classic model of technology acceptance formulated by the scholars in 2003. And there are some variables involved in, in this model. I will uh, explain one by one. The first one is the performance expectancy, and it refers to the extent to which consumers believe that some specific item could have, uh, could have them. And the second one is the effort expectation. Uh, it's, it's concerned about the extent to the ease of using this uh, specific item. And next one is the social influence, and which means the extent to which the impacts of important others' opinions can have on the indiv individual users towards some specific item. Uh, sorry. And then is the hedonic motivation. It means the pleasure and the joy that uh, consumers derived from using this technology and some other impacts, including the shape, appearance, and voice characteristic of the voice assistant, and the user's personal data collection, which is the personal information security, could affect the customer's intention to use this device. And the dependent variable is the behavioral intentions, which includes the expert of willingness to pay, the length of the stay, the loyalty, and purchase intentions. And um, this is the research hypothesis and for the quest, for the first three questions, uh, research questions, uh, uh, it's hypothesized that all the factors have positive relationships with the customer's behavior intention to the hotels with AI-based voice assistant. And for the second research questions, um, because mainland China, mainland, Ch mainland China is the largest, uh, largest, uh, the biggest visitor source market for Macau. So uh, mainland Chinese, so it's hypothesized that mainland Chinese and Macau citizens, uh, the perceptions of them, of the AI-based voice assistant have a different, have a significant difference. And uh, based on the hypothesis and the theory, uh, a, a, a qualitative method was adopted in in this paper, in this research. And from last year's December, the questionnaires with five point lecture uh, skill was adopted into a questionnaire, was drafted. And with the screening questions, let's say whether uh, the respond having the experience in hotel or whether the respond having uh, the experience using voice assistant. And in this year's uh, January, there's a, a pattern test was, uh, was conducted to check the validity to check the validity with 10 people. And later in February, the main survey was conducted on, on through the online website with a sample size of 340 respondents, of which uh, 100 residents are Macau residents, 100 res respondents are Macau residents, while 200 res uh, respondents are mainland Chinese residents. And later on, the data cleaning and analysis was conducted through IPM's bus software. And here is the findings. The first one is the um, demographic issues. Um, as you can see, the genders is nearly equal between male and female. And most of the respondents are young generations in the range, in the range of two, uh, 20 to 29 years old. And most of the respondents are young university students. And as I mentioned, the, the number of Macau residents versus the number of mainland Chinese is around one to two. And here is the table of the multiple linear regression coefficients. And the R square is, uh, there, uh, is, 
is point uh, three. Uh, it's point six two eight, uh, which shows the regression is of good quality and uh, the six. 62.8% uh, of the de uh, dependent variables are affected by the, uh, by the independent variables. As you can see in the table that uh, the performance and expectations, the social influences, the hedonic motivations are uh, showing a positive re relationship with the dependent variable, which is the behavioral intention. And if at the uh, 0 point, 0 0.1 level, the other impacts also uh, shows a positive relationship with the with the behavioral intentions. So here it answers the first question that uh, for, for all of the hypothesis except hypothesis, hypothesis two are uh, supported and the performance expectations, social impacts, adopting motivation and other facts uh, have, have, uh, have shown positive relationship with the behavioral intentions. And for this table is a comparison of the Macau people and mainland Chinese perceptions to the voice assistant. Well, as you can see in the table, the uh, performance uh, expectations and the behavior intentions and the social influence at a point one uh, level, uh, it shows the significant, dif uh, significant difference, which means mainland Chinese and Macau citizens perceptions to this uh, voice uh, assistant uh, have significant difference in, the, in these three areas. So this hypothesis is partially supported and here is about the managerial suggestions. So based on the findings before, we found that and so most of the respondents showing a positive, to, positive attitude to this device. Uh, so our hotels in Macau may, may consider uh, have a testing uh, on, on, on have a testing on, on implementing the, this kind of device in Macau. But there are some following uh, factors we need to consider. The first one is the the reliability of the device performance is very is very important. It's most is the most significant factor, and the second one is the psychological demand of the customers uh, really really matters, because as you can see, the mainland Chinese customers they care more about the Macau's uh, residents Macau Macau residents in their the reputation or the social status, and. Because because Macau is an is an international city, so it requires the device and it could support multiple language with the relevant contents to uh, for the guests from different regions, and because the uh, uh, because this kind of uh, voice assistant uh, is an innovative feature, so it can improve the high tech. Uh, it can improve the hotel image to be uh, become a high tech become high tech hotel. So. Uh, if we target for the young generations, so this could this kind of uh, uh, innovative feature could be a um, promotion strategy. And for the for next one, if we targeting for the local local uh, customers, uh, sufficient guidance of how to use this device is required, and, and also the privacy is well secured. It's also uh, well, well confirmed. Well, the last of last but not least, the shape appearance and the voice character of this device could be adjust, adjusted to the, uh, to the hotel theme and features. However, this research also has many limitations and more research needed to be done in the future. Well, of course, the sample size should be expanded and more data from different locations should be collected and some other factors, for example, the personalities or customers' habits should also be considered. And also because we know the implementation of this kind of AI device uh, is, uh, uh, it costs a lot, so uh, 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 in the future the cost uh, the cost report should be considered. So we 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 don't want, we don't only consider from the consumer side. We also need to cons uh, consider from the hotel side. So the budget issue should be considered. So that's all my presentation. Thank you. Okay. So thank you for your uh, thank you for your presentation, Qi Xiaotong. And uh, any comments or suggestion question from our panels? A very well done presentation. Um, really, really good. I think one of the biggest challenge we have in hotels, which I think just as a highlight is, is the legacy systems, because a lot of those robots and all that don't connect to, to our legacy systems. And that's the biggest challenge in terms of converting for us. But I think overall, you're right, because in 1990, when the internet came out, people were saying, I don't need the internet, I'll just turn on the TV. 
and how things have changed now. This will be the future moving forward. So more research on it will definitely be very interesting to see what's coming out, but clearly shows a, a trend towards you know more technology and more efficiency. So well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Tom, congratulations. I think this is a very good uh, presentations with a very solid model and also relative bigger sample size. Congratulations. Okay. So if I have to give some suggestion, I will say, because your sample size majority of the people is 20 to 29 years old. They are relatively young generations. So I guess the, this generation naturally made more towards to the technology side. So if you can have a larger age group, then we'll be make this uh, study more Yes, <laughs> thank you. But overall, it's very good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Xiaotong. I think this is very, very detailed and also the well done. And that's, you also do a lot of testing on, on your result, which is very good. But just uh, one question I just want to ask, uh, because you point out that uh, some like the Macau citizen versus mainland China citizen, they have some kind of different in terms of the result. So do you think this is something to do with their, their language, it means uh, Cantonese versus Mandarin, or, or do you think we need really, really the, the adoption of the maybe the, the mobile technology between the two different regions? Because we think, because um, Macau welcomes uh, all of the guests from different, from uh, all of the world. So different, uh, different guests, they have different backgrounds. So they enjoy and they enjoy and they prefer different uh, culture or different content. So uh, for this case, we prefer that the hotels could prepare for different, the voice assistants with different contents. For example, from mainland China, they may use the, uh, um, they may use the Chinese uh, Chinese version voice assistant, but for the foreign foreigners, they may consider using the US, maybe from Amazon's. Yes, they may consider using different voice assistant, voice assistant to solve this problem. Yeah, thank you, very good. Thank yeah. you. No, nothing much for me, uh, but uh, do you feel confident, Chi? When you're presenting your presentation, <laughs> I feel uh, I feel you have uh, a little bit nervous. Uh, yeah, but, but um, don't be. But I try my best to overcome it. I, I can <laughs> see that you are trying. But uh, um, some suggestion is uh, I know you are doing very uh, deep research, and uh, but uh, if you are doing presentation, you don't have to put all the tables on the on on the PPT. We don't have time to read your figures. Oh, sure. What? What are you supposed to do because you are on the stage? You're supposed to convince your members to trust, to believe what you study. Okay. 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 Thank you. Other than that, very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your suggestion. Good. Okay. So thank you, uh, Xiao Tong. Okay. The third presenter is Hazel Huang. So please, and then you have 15 minutes for your oral presentation, please. Hello. Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to present my research thesis, which is workplace sexual harassment in hospitality industry in mainland China and Macau SAR, an examination of employees' intention of reporting using theory of planned behavior. So in this presentation, I will cover these points. So probably you have heard about the Me Too movement, the Harvey Weinstein starting from the Hollywood, and all this movement has encouraged many, many victims of sexual harassment to report their issues. And also Me Too movement has also taken place in Asia. For example, on the right-hand side, you can see this girl Xianzi has went in public with her allegation of being sexually harassed against Zhu Jin, one of the China's most famous TV hosts, which also brought to brought the public to the to arise the arise their awareness of sexual harassment. 
So first of all, let's look at the definition of sexual harassment. The most accepted definition of sexual harassment is by EEOC, which each defines sexual harassment as unwelcome sexual advance, request for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical harassment of sexual nature. And nowadays, both China and Macau has relevant law about sexual harassment. However, from previous studies, we can see that the hospitality industry has a high occurring rate of sexual harassment. And we can see in different regions, the sexual harassment rate is different. So I would like to introduce my first hypothesis. There are significant differences between Macau and many Chinese employees' perception towards sexual harassment in the hospitality industry. However, although there are negative impacts of sexual harassment, of course, the, the reporting rate of sexual harassment is relatively low. Therefore, this research focuses on the intention of reporting sexual harassment. So the model applied in this research is called theory of planned behavior. Overall, the theory suggested that the stronger the intention is, the more likely the people will take the planned behavior. And so that's the second hypothesis. There is a positive influence between the intention of reporting and the actual behavior. So apart from this, um, Jason suggested that there are mainly three factors that can influence people's intention, which are attitude towards the behavior, subjective norm, and perceived behavioral control. So from the literature review, we will consider the three factors. So the factor one attitude. So from previous studies, we noticed that both, both, both employees and managers in the hospitality industry may not sure about the constitutions of sexual harassment. Therefore, they may ignore or tolerate sexual harassment. And also when they report sexual harassment, they may feel guilty about that. And also the nature of hospitality industry may also influence people's attitude towards sexual harassment and reporting sexual harassment. Like they may consider the job as playing a role and customers are always right is the, that word. So when, when sexual harassment occurs, they may, they may react differently when outside of work, which means they may tolerate when it happens in, in the workplace. And also they may think that service relationships should not contain personal interests, therefore blur the line between work and social interaction. Therefore, here comes the hypothesis three, which, which connect the influence between employees' attitude and, the, and their intention. And about perceived behavioral control. So first of all, leader trust and social support from coworkers will definitely influence people's intention. When they are not sure their accusations will be taken seriously, they may not report it. And also if their, their co-workers report sexual harassment and receive a dissatisfied solution, they may choose not to report it. And also the employee status in the hospitality industry is relatively low. So there is an unequal power between the customer and the employees. Also, they want to take the risk of being complained because it will influence their income. Therefore, they may not choose to report the sexual harassment issue. Also, they want to minimize the engagement of harasser and unpleasant feelings. Therefore, we can, we can take the hypothesis for there is a positive influence between perceived behavioral control and the report and the intention. And for subjective norm, first of all, Chinese culture, they always, the Chinese people always want to avoid direct conflicts because they want, don't want to lose face, right? And also people don't want to talk about sex, especially in public. And women are always be, consist, be considered as the belonging of men. And also people may think that women should be kind, more aggressive, more responsible for sexual morality. So if they report sexual harassment, they may experience like slut shaming. And also in the hospitality industry from employee's side, they may they have to follow like strict dress and grooming code. They, 
they are supposed to be attractive to customers. And also from the customer side, they feel less moral responsibility in a commercial relationship. They will have a sense of anonymity when they are outside of home. And also if other people also harass the, the employees in the hospitality industry, the group mob behavior will also influence their behavior. Therefore, here comes the last hypothesis. There is a positive influence between subjective norm that was reporting sexual harassment and their intention. And here's a summary of hypothesis. So in this research, quantitative research was taken using online questionnaire survey. And the research sample would be the, are the participants with experience working in hospitality industry in Macau and mainland China. Snowball sampling was used in the data collection period, which means the participants are encouraged to share the survey to, the, to their friends and colleagues who also work in the hospitality industry. So in the, in the first part of the questionnaire, screening questions were settled to, to ensure the quality of the responders. And also in the second part of the questionnaire, we, we focus about the perception of workplace sexual harassment. In this, in this part, we use the definition of freak shot and include 19 questions. So, so the responders were asked whether they have experienced or, or witnessed such issues in the past 24 months. And in part three, we, we focus on the intention factors and behavior. So for the, for the factors, we, we applied, applied the questions from previous studies and, and use the fine point like by scale, bipolar scale questions to, to ask whether their, their feelings about reporting sexual harassment and, and ways if they really they think they have experienced sexual harassment or not, if they have report sexual harassment or not. And part four, and they collect the personal information of the respondents. So here are the findings of the research. So as we can see that, that there is a huge gap between the perception of sexual harassment and actual experience. For example, we can see that although from the mainland Chinese group, although, although more than half of the people said that they have never experienced sexual harassment issues, however, only 7.7 .7 of them actually have never experienced sexual harassment issues in the listed 19 questions. So there is a huge gap in here. And also from the findings, we can see that the mean of the fine point bipolar scale questions about people's attitude, perceived behavioral control, subjective norm, and intention is about 2.5, which means the, the overall the respondents have a positive attitude towards the factors of reporting sexual harassment. However, when we do the hypothesis test, first of all, using one way ANOVA, we can see that there are no significant differences between the mainland China and Macau group, which against the hypothesis one. And when we do the hypothesis two text, we can see that surprisingly, although people are of high intention of reporting sexual harassment, actually seldom of them do actually take this into action. So the hypothesis test shows, shows that there is actually no significant correlation between the intention of reporting and reporting behavior. And from the correlation analysis and multiple regression analysis, we can see that there are significant positive correlation between attitude, perceived behavior control, subjective norm to intention. And the subjective norm are the, the most important factor among the three. And attitudes, attitudes have the least infraction. So the hypothesis three, four, and five is, are supported. And uh, here is the summary of the hypothesis. 
So from the hypothesis test, we, we found that there are no significant difference between many Chinese and Macau group. So we guess it may be caused to the similar social and cultural background because we have gained that the subjective norm has influenced people's mind lot, a lot. And also we find that there is surprisingly no significant correlation between the intention of reporting and the action of reporting sexual har harassment. So we, we think it may be due to the gap be between the perception and the actual experience of sexual harassment, which means they actually experience sexual harassment, but they don't consider that as sexual harassment. They may think that it's not sexual harassment, so why should I report it, right? And so uh, I would like to talk about the implications about, uh, about this research. So first of all, from the subjective norm perception, we can see that from the educational level, we can popularize sex education to the public so that to correct their attitude towards sexual harassment. And also we should not avoid talking about sex related topics. And also we have to show more respect to women so that they can earn higher social status. And from the side of perceived behavioral control, laws and re regulations should be improved and the society should have more respect to the hospitality workers and so that they can earn high, higher social status. And for the hospitality industry, first of all, can accordingly hire the salary of their employees so that they can be more respected for the, for the society. And also the industry can introduce measures to do with the sexual harassment and also clarify the reporting process and also the protection measures for the whistleblowers of sexual harassment can be taken. Also, leader trust, as mentioned, is very important in reporting sexual harassment. And always also the colleagues support is also very important for the whistleblowers. And for the attitude towards behavior, the hospitality can organize relevant trainings for the employees to help them to clarify the definition of sexual harassment. And also they can create a friendly working environment to re report sexual harassment. In the future studies, so first of all, because the, this survey only conducts like 300 participants, which is a, just a small amount, so we can involve more participants in the future. And also we can focus on the gap between the perception and actual experience of sexual harassment among hospitality workers. And we can find out its causes and solutions. Also, it is important to explore the intention of not reporting sexual harassment because we only focus on, on why, why people are willing to report sexual harassment. So we can focus on the opposite side. And also we can focus on the improvement measures analysis using controllable variable method, which means can see where the, which, which implication can be taken that affects more of the, the, the intention of the employees. That's all for my presentation. Thank you very much for your listening. Okay, thank, uh, thank you, Hazel, for your uh, oral presentations. I would like to seek for the question or comments from our panel. Hello? Yes. Yeah. Congratulations, that was a very, very good presentation. Uh, I think your approach with even supporting your thesis and, and not supporting the thesis and then your future um, research you want to do, I think you've, you've really covered everything there. So it was really well done. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, actually not much comments. I mean, you could, you could argue if you take uh, reports from the 1995 to 1998, or, I mean, and to your original statement of the Me Too movement, I think things have changed a lot in terms of how people report versus the past mm -hmm. data that we have. Yes. Uh, but there's still obviously a lot of gaps that you're wanting, wanting to research. So well done. Congratulations. Very good. Mm, thank you. Well done. I really like your research. I think it's a very 
uh, detailed information. Yes. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. It's very inform informative. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I missed it. Uh, is a respondent, oh, uh, is your survey is only towards male or female or both? Both. 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 Okay. What about those natural? Natural. Mm, bye. Mm, Maybe late, later on you may exp <laughs> to to <laughs> expand your 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 sampling size. Oh, yeah. sampling size. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Hazel. Thank you for your presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw you divide the group into Macau and, and mainland China. Yes. Just just because you kind of focus on the worst pay, so I think. Maybe in, in, in the future, you can also kind of divide the group in more detail, like how long you have been working for the company. I think that probably the, the name of your, your survey in the company could maybe sub become a kind of a factor or whether you report or not. And also um, other situations like the culture of how, how, how people feel with the company support. But, but mm -hmm. overall, I think it's a very, very good presentation, very detailed analysis. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for all your presentation. So since we have very uh, limited time schedule, so now I'm going to present the certificate to our student presenters and followed by the uh, expert panel for the photo uh, group photo taking, please. Uh, Carol Wang, please. 